Hello, my name is Steve Bowler, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, otherwise known as EIGRP. Specifically within EIGRP, in this lab we're going to be taking a look at stub routing within EIGRP. And we're just going to go over some of the basics of stub routing within EIGRP. It is most commonly used in a hub and spoke implementation and this is because only the only route for traffic is through the distribution layer our hub router in a hub and spoke situation so in this case we have two routers router 1 and router 2 router 1 is our hub site which is our distribution layer and then router 2 is going to be acting as a spoke site which is going to be at the access layer and it is also very important to note that in EIGRP stub routing that the only configuration needed is done only on the stub or the spoke routers so we're going to be configuring router 2 for the stub routing and we're going to see that the EIGRP stub router will report its status as stub to its peers and this is so that the peers will not query the stub router for any routes And so what we're going to see with this type of implementation is that we are going to be able to conserve bandwidth and memory on the routers on the spoke end or the spoke sites. So again, the real need for the stub routing is because if you look at this network, router 2 has no other connections except for its upstream neighbor, which is router 1 at the distribution layer. So there is no need for router 2 to hold the full routing table and thus all it really needs is a default route sent from R1 to R2 and we can implement stub routing on R2 to help conserve bandwidth memory and help the EIGRP autonomous system. So what we're going to do in this lab is we're going to take a look at the implementation and the configuration of EIGRP stub routing then we're going to verify the configuration with show commands and debug commands. So we're going to see on router 2 that we have four main types of stub routing. We have receive only, we have connected, we also have static, and then we also have summary. So with these four different flavors or types of stub routing, we're going to see that the connected, static, and summary can all be used together, or they can all be used, like I can use connected and static, or connected and summary, or summary and static. So there's any combination of these last three can be used together. However, the receive only is exactly what it sounds like. So it's only going to receive routes from the hub router, the hub site router at the distribution layer. So again, it's not going to send any routes out. So there's no way that it, this received only command for our stub implementation, this receive only option cannot be used in conjunction with any of the bottom three. So let's go ahead and get into the configuration of this lab, what we're going to do, and let me go ahead and explain a little of our network topology. Again, it's not too much here to, to, to configure. So we have, on R1, we have three loopbacks, loopback 10, 11, and 12. So let's go on to R1. Let's get R1 set up first for EIGRP. And I think